Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In the last video, we learned how to graph exponential functions. This means we now have the necessary tools to compare linear and exponential functions to truly see how they measure up to each other. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to tell at a glance whether functions grow faster or slower than each other. First, we will take a look at two examples comparing linear and exponential growth functions. Then we'll compare three different exponential growth functions to each other. You win the lottery and are given two options. You can either get $500 every day for two weeks, or you can get $1 the first day and double that amount every day for two weeks. Which should you choose? For the first option, you receive $500 at first, then add another $500 13 more times, resulting in a linear expression that totals $7,000. In the second option, you start with only $1, but then it doubles 13 times, creating an exponential expression equaling $8,192. So the exponential option, despite how bad it first sounded, actually ended up being the better one. But how? Let's compare the two functions over time by graphing them. In the beginning, the first option started at 500, and the second option started at 1. The next day, the first option adds 500 more, while the second option only goes up to 2. This gap is just getting wider. There is no way the second option was better. But if we finish graphing both functions, something interesting happens. For the first few days, the exponential function didn't seem to be going anywhere. But then starting at about day six, it started increasing faster and faster. On the 10th day, the exponential function has sped up so much that it gains $512, more than the linear function gains on any day. And the exponential option just keeps speeding up. If you are only receiving money for 13 days, that's the first day plus 12 more, the first option would have been about $2,500 better. But on the very last day, the exponential option gains enough to pull ahead of the linear option by over $1,000. This will always happen when comparing exponential functions to linear functions. Eventually, the exponential function will outpace the linear one. It's not a question of whether the exponential function will surpass the linear function. It's about when. Nate invests $1,000 in a piggy bank and adds $50 to it every month, while Michaela invests her $500 in a savings account with 6% monthly interest. Who has more money saved after two years? So Nate starts with $1,000 and adds $50 to it every month, and Michaela only invests $500 but receives 6% interest every month. So just like last time, we're comparing a linear function to an exponential function. Does this mean Michaela's exponential savings account automatically wins? Not necessarily. If we graph both functions, we can see how they compare over time. Like we said before, an exponential function will always speed past a linear function. But we were asked a specific question. How do they compare after two years? That's the initial amount plus 23 more months. So we look where the input is 23. And at that point, the linear function is still higher. So Nate would have more money saved after two years. It'll take another four months for Michaela's savings account to pass Nate's piggy bank. Even though this video is about comparing linear and exponential functions, it's also important to understand how exponential functions compared to each other. We can graph all three of these and see that some of them move nice and slow while others speed by. If we compare functions A and B, we see that B outpaces A at around the input 19 and a half mark, despite the huge lead A had at the beginning. Why is that? It's because B has a higher growth factor. Higher growth factors will always grow faster than smaller growth factors. If we compare functions at B and C, C seems to have a higher growth factor. 
yet B comes out ahead. This is because C's growth factor occurs every two units. To get a better idea of how quickly it grows, we can rewrite the exponent's denominator as a root. This way, we can clearly see that B has a slightly higher growth factor, meaning it will end up higher than C. And of course, now that we know the true growth factor of function C, we can see why it surpasses function A. Keep these basic concepts in mind. Exponential functions always surpass linear functions eventually, and exponential functions with higher growth factors grow faster. In the next lesson, we'll learn about a different kind of exponential function, exponential decay. See you then.